Last night, under much more pleasant conditions than Monday evening, Jason Jennings put together another fine outing. He consistently kept the vaunted Cardinal lineup off balance. But behind every good pitching performance is solid defense. And the Rockies' D last night was splendid. From tough hops to double plays, the D was a big reason the unthinkable occurred. Two runs was good enough to shake hands in the ninth. Colorado, St. Louis, next. It is a terrific Wednesday evening in the Mile High City, and everybody making their way to 20th and Blake, Coors Field, the only appearance of the St. Louis Cardinals in town this year. And tomorrow will be game four of this set. It'll be getaway day, but first things first, the Rockies trying to make it two of three tonight against St. Louis, owners of the best record in the National League. Good evening, glad you're along as always. I'm Drew Goodman. How about last night's ball game, two to one? You know, there's only been two two-to-nothing games in Coors Field history. There's never been a one-to-nothing ball game here. What is going on? The Rockies are playing low-scoring games the last four, at least, at Coors Field, and they're winning some of them, which is obviously great news. Let me bring in my partner, George Frazier. You love to talk about good pitching, and last night we saw great defense as well. Well, you have to have it if you're going to win in this ballpark, and you had two pitchers on the mound last night, Mulder and Jennings, to create a lot of ground ball outs. And how about this play by Edmonds on a line drive in the gap in right center. Walker with a ball up the right field, up the first baseline to flip over to Jennings again. How about this play by Nunez to get Varmus at first base? That's not it, folks. You're getting ready to see the best one. Gonzalez, the flip over to Varmus. Back, and oh, did Jennings like it. He really liked it. That ended the seventh. Todd Helton got robbed late in the ball game. Look at that play by Grizzolanek to get the force on the flip up the middle to end the ball game. This was terrific. Gonzalez, great play. Desi Relaford got flipped on the play. That was as good a 5-4-3 under pressure with a one-run lead, turn a two, as you will see. Oh, it is, absolutely, and you have to have that. Tonight, you're going to have to have it again. Kennedy's going to turn the ball over a lot, and you're going to see a lot more ground ball outs. And Matt Morris goes for St. Louis. Looks like a pretty good pitching matchup. Kennedy and Morris, and we're in a microphone for us tonight. Left right, fielder really Matt Holliday no, okay. swinging a hot bat. Come on back to Coors Field with us. Well, we're set for baseball. David Eckstein's in the box. Joe Kennedy is delivering pitch number one. And uh, according to home plate umpire Terry Kraft, it is in the zone for a strike. David Eckstein, you may describe him as a pain in the neck type of player, 5'7", about 155 pounds. He's been a pain in the neck to Joe Kennedy in his career. High throw, safe at first. Desi Relaford a little off balance on that delivery. And we bragged about the defense just a couple of moments ago. And we have an error to begin things. Here's the lineup. Eckstein, 10 for 18 against Joe Kennedy coming in. So Toguchi gets the start in center field for Edmonds. Albert Pujols, Reggie Sanders, Grizzolanek slides to the five spot. Walker's given the night off also. Scott Siebold gets the start at third base. Roger Cedeno will be in right field. Yadier Molina again behind the plate. Matt Morris is on the hill. And this pitch to Toguchi. Well, it's just a matter of staying underneath the baseball and getting there. See, he's got plenty of time as he sets himself. No crow hop, just stand up and throw, and to throw sails on him. Second time it's happened in this series to Desi Relaford. Once at third, now this time it's second. He has three errors on the year. Atkins in fair territory has one play, and that's the first. Eckstein to second base on the fielder's choice. Well, let's look at Joe Kennedy's overall numbers since his very first start. You looked at an earned run average of nearly 1350. Well, it's at 645. It's gone down every start since then. And obviously 645 is not good, but it is half of what it used to be. Fully healthy now. I believe that two and one in his last three starts. Middle of the lineup right here with Pujols is going to be a problem. Reggie Sanders. And then work fast. It's good for the defense. That's something Kennedy likes to do and pound the strike zone. Albert Pujols takes ball one. A year ago on this date, Pujols went five for five against the Pittsburgh Pirates. He has two five-hit games in his career. Both came against the Pirates. Rockies kept him quiet last night. 
Will not have a hit in the ball game last night. Of course, he had the big blow two nights ago with the Rockies ahead 3-1. He hit a three-run homer. So overall, two for six with that home run in the series. Swung out a miss, two and one. Well, welcome to the month of June. How about that? Yeah, huh? Man, the first two months were by fast. They did. I can't believe it's June 1st. Change up, and it misses low and away, three and one. Reggie Sanders is on deck. An all right-handed lineup tonight against Joe Kennedy and Sanders. At the knees for a strike. Pujols thought it was low initially. Three balls and two strikes. That just shows the respect Kennedy has for Pujols. Came back on a 2-1 change. Missed. Came right back with it at 80 miles an hour for strike two. Who holds second in the league with a 371 road average? That curveball wasn't all that bad. Ball four, two on, one out. And let's take a look at the gloves this afternoon or this evening. For Colorado in the outfield, Holiday, Wilson, and Hop. As you look at Todd Helton, he's in the infield with Relaford, Barmus, and Atkins. And J.D. Klosser is doing the catching this evening. Todd just one miscue in 49 games. Last night he came in late, had an at bat. It was just the second time this year he did not start a ball game. Sanders with two on. In the air down the right field line, and play it to Brad Hopp, tagging up to Zeckstein. Even for Brad Hopp, that would have been a monster throw. Yeah, I thought that ball was going to end up in the seats. Trying to look at the wind. The wind's blowing straight down. <laughs> Again. Look at the flags. See, it's blowing straight down. It is, George. <laughs> that is one way of describing <laughs> the atmosphere. No wind? The atmospheric activity or lack thereof. There you go. Mark Grizzolanic. Takes a ball. Every team Grezelonic has played on, it seems like he's always been under the radar. People don't look at his abilities. A guy that can play the game, I mean, plays a brilliant second base, shows power. 69 home runs in his career. That's in there. You know, he's just one of those guys. He's just a good baseball player. Yeah, he is. I mean, he just plays the game the right way. And I think when he's on a club like St. Louis, you have an Edmonds, a Walker, a Pujols, Sanders that other teams forget about what he can do with his bat and, and all of a sudden it's like a mistaken guy in the lineup and typically this guy hurts you somewhere in the ball game. You know what, he has three 300 plus seasons in the big leagues, 306 with Montreal in 96, his first full season in the big leagues. He had 326 with the Dodgers in 99, came back a couple of years ago with the Cubs and hit 314. Last year, he hit 307 with the Cubs in half a season. Battling some injuries last year. Yeah, he's at 331 right now with 175 at bats. Just 20 RBIs, but an indication of where he hits in the lineup a lot, too. That rookie year in 96, George, not only did he hit 306, he stole 33 bases. Well, and you wouldn't anticipate that from him either. I mean, you look at his body size, you don't think he's a guy that has that much speed, but obviously he did. And he was an all-star that year in 96. Not a surprise when you look at all those numbers. And a line drive, base hit. Grizzolana comes through, and that error really hurts the Rockies. As Eckstein comes around the score, one to nothing, St. Louis. I thought Kennedy had pitched this inning very well. You take out that error, obviously you're in the dugout, but by walking Pujols, you get back in the, and you get Sanders. Now you have to deal with Grezelonic. 
a curveball that looked like it stayed up in the strike zone and allowed Eckstein to score. And here's the career minor leaguer, a nine-year minor league vet, Scott Siebel, called up when Scott Rowland went down. Isn't that great to see? I mean, he's probably playing third base thinking I'm making a decent salary playing. Maybe there's an opportunity that will arise somewhere with some club. I'll get my chance at the big league level. Did he think it was going to be here for the Cardinals? He may have just driven in the second run. Wilson has trouble with it and then overruns it. Kuhl scores. And it's two to nothing St. Louis. So we bragged about the great defense last night. And the Rockies have now committed two errors in this first inning. It is an RBI. The error is given Wilson because Grizzlanek, with the ball right in front of him, was able to go first to third. Ball's hit hard, and all that uh, Wilson's thinking about, maybe he's going to have a play. Look like it rolled up onto the heel of the glove. That prevented from the clean field by Wilson. Pujol scores. And you allow Grizzlanek to third. For Scott Siebel, his first Major League RBI. In nine starts this year, Kennedy had given up just two first-inning runs. Already two here in this ball game. So Daniel, switch hitter, fouls it off one and one. Game time temperature 75 degrees, a most pleasant Colorado evening. Some of the Cardinal players who were less familiar with the weather in Denver couldn't believe the dramatic change from Monday to Tuesday night. We who live here understand. Now, I wish they'd moved our booth down about 100 yards on the right. Because then you can look right out over the buildings and see the mountains and the snow. <laughs> that would be pretty. It'd be a little tougher to call the game, though. It'd be so relaxing. It'd be a tough time to stay away from me. Get a little breeze in my face. You'd be out. Yeah, done. Out like a light. Give me a good hot dog with some chili. I'm history. What'd you want? Hot dog with chili again? Yeah. Beans. And a lot of lot of uh, cheese on top. That's about the second time in a week that you've been begging for chili dogs. They're awesome, you kidding? One ball, two strikes on Roger Cedeno. First and third situation. And again, Joe Kennedy goes to first. Pitch misses inside. 22 pitches now for Kennedy in the inning. 15 strikes. In the air to Brad Hopp in right field. And that will finally end the inning. The Cardinals take advantage of poor fielding by the Rockies. They lead 2 to nothing. Cardinals leading two to nothing. They took advantage of two miscues in that first inning by the Colorado Rockies. So the Rockies will have to play catch up. Both runs were unearned. Matt Holiday, we told you before the ball game, kind enough to wear a microphone this evening. And here's Matt a little bit earlier. Oh! <laughs> oh, and one, and one. What? Oh. Well, I hope Matt's loose now. Do it. Well, his lungs are loose. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> okay, Clint Barmas steps in. Yeah, Barmas, 318 average, seven home runs, 27 RBI. 64 hits and 201 at bats so far on the season. And this one finally eludes the third baseman. Barmas will have a double. 
reason I said that is last night you saw the play Nunez made on Clint Barmas during our open tonight. He flat robbed Barmas of a double last night. Seabold could not do the same thing here. Yeah, look at this, right off of the glove of Seabold into foul territory. Watch something whenever Barmas runs up the first baseline that Albert Pujol saw the ball go away, but what he does, he creeps up in front to try to push Barmas wider so they might have a play on him at second base. Desi Relaford steps in against Matt Morris. And that pitch is down. Talked about the starting rotation for the Cardinals. They make a nice little basketball team. Carpenter 6'6", six, six, Mulder 6'6", six, six, Morris 6'5". Six, 230 pounds in his eighth big league year. And the sliders inside 2-0. and oh. Morris off to the best start of his career 5-0. In 2002, he began the season 4-0 and finished up with 17 wins. Yeah, how, about it, how about his record since 01? Overall record. Big chopper over the head of Albert Pujols. Barmas can walk home. Relaford will go to second. Back-to-back -back doubles. Now, you see a veteran player make an error in the ball game. A lot of times, they wanted to redeem themselves as quickly as they can. Take a look at how the Rockies will line up after Barmas and Relaford. Todd Helton in the three slot. Preston Wilson clean up. Brad Hopp, five. Matt Holliday has hit 11 of his last 12 ball games. He hit the ball hard every time up last night. Garrett Atkins, J.D. Klosser, and Joe Kennedy. And the fastball in the inside corner for a strike. Todd Helton. We talked about the tough slump, the worst of his career. It's dropped his average from the high 330s to 259. He is three for his last 50. His last RBI came two weeks ago, May 18th, at home against the San Francisco Giants. So he's been stuck on 19 ribbies for a while. Maybe this is the guy he breaks out against. In his career, six for 18 with three home runs against Matt Morris. It is grabbed by Cedeno. And his throw comes back in. One out. So let's look at Matt Morris's overall numbers for 05. We'll take a peek at the scouting report right after that. Morris's numbers at 5 and 0. Oh. Nine walks. Are you kidding me? In 50 and two thirds innings, 44 strikeouts. The opposition at 245. That nine walks, folks, is outstanding. Will his curveball work at altitude? He's 0 and 2 and 3 starts at Coors Field. Surprised him quickly. 193 on run average in the, yeah, those early innings. And I'll tell you something else about Matt Morris. After the shoulder surgery, the Cardinals really didn't anticipate getting him until about right now. So that 5-0 record, just a huge plus for the Cardinals. See if Wilson could tie up the game with Relaford at second. Two balls and a strike on Preston. Relaford, a bouncing double down the right field line, put him at second. Wilson went around. That's two and two. If you notice one pitch that Morris has not gone to in this ball game has been his curveball. That was his out pitch for so many years. Straight out with the top 12 to 6. A lot of pitchers uncomfortable trying to throw the curve here. Softly hit this. Will not drop. Taguchi made a fine play, made like Jim Edmonds. Just his third start in center field for the Cardinals. To Gucci, me, it's a nice break on this baseball because anytime you have a power hitter at the plate with a big swing, it's tough to judge the flight and distance of this baseball. 
Taguchi got a good break, moved right to it. Once Relaford saw it was caught, he hustled back to the bag at second. Relaford had the double with a man in scoring position. That was just the second this series, two for 21. Now two for 22, including actually two for 23, if you include the outs by Helt and Wilson this inning. And 10 for 100 coming in, so 11 for their last 103, hitting with runners in scoring position. And Hop will have to work out of a deep hole, 0-2. And speaking of hitting with runners in scoring position, among rookies in the National League, Barmas is number one at 364. The only other hitter above 300 among rookies with runners in scoring position in the NL, Brad Hopp at 316. And it's slowly hit right side. Rizalonic will throw to Pujols, and the Rockies get one, but they leave a man at second. He was there with nobody else. Joe Kennedy drops a breaking pitch in there to Yadier Molina. Been behind the plate every ball game in this series. The Cubs have been winning some games on the West Coast. St. Louis with their loss last night. Their lead cut to six and a half in the NL Central, which is pretty darn good at this stage of the ball game. You're talking about June 1st leading your division by six and a half games. Not a team around that wouldn't take that every year. Well, every year that they've won the pennant in the Central or in the East, it was before the three divisions, the seven and a half game lead they had yesterday was the largest on May 31st ever. Matt Morris steps in. And he's taking a good long look at Jose Akendo. We've talked about it throughout the series. Tony LaRusso loves to go against the grain more than any manager. Well, takes a look at second and then blocks to Desi Relaford for the out. So Morris gets the job done from a sacrifice standpoint. Molina at second, and David Eckstein comes up. I thought it was interesting last night. We'll see the fun here. Tony LaRusso said, you know what? You should have second-guessed me. I was in the office visiting with him. Tracy Ringlesby and C.J. Cherry is their traveling secretary for a long time. And, and he goes, should have second-guessed me. We ought to be swinging. He said, I got to be tougher than that. I got to think stronger. And I'm thinking, it was just, it was baseball. I mean, you're down one. Try to tie the score. Yeah, I should have let him swing away. I mean, you know, it's easy the next day after you sleep on it. And this is a guy that's won more than 2,000 games in the big leagues yet goes home and carries it over with him 24 hours later figuring out how he should have won that ball game the day before and one thing Johnny Oates the late Johnny Oates told me when he won division titles with the Texas Rangers won at Baltimore said I wished I could have figured out a way to enjoy the wins more instead of letting the losses eat at me longer there has not been a coach that has not uttered that same Sense. Well, and, and you know, the reason he said that was because Joe Torrey told him one time, he said, savor the victories and, and let them stay with you till you at least get here the next day. And when you lose a game, turn the light off at midnight and go home. He said, if it's the seventh game of the World Series, totally different thing. But the Sunday afternoon game in Baltimore, go home and go to bed and look forward to the next day. Easier to say, harder to do. Oh, yeah. That Lost was, her with the block two and two. Particularly, I think, for a manager that's working with a bunch of young kids because you did you teach them well enough? Did you do the right things that you needed to do in situations? And, and I think that's where uh, it's probably a little more difficult to swallow the losses with a managing a young team versus a veteran team. Veteran teams take care of themselves, and the Cardinals have. They've got that six-and-a-half game lead in the National League Central. The Cubs second. The Brewers three games under 500 or nine back. The Pirates playing decent baseball. The Reds, they'll be in town this weekend. The Pirates have played better of late. This is a foul ball also. Eckstein taking a look at the bat, and he will need a new piece of lumber. Now let's take a look at the standings in the National League Central. 
The Astros struggle continually. They're 14 games back. The Cardinals head there after tomorrow's ball game. Reds starting to play a little bit better baseball. A knee-jerk reaction to a lot of things there. Uh, Jimenez was released as a middle infielder after giving a three-year contract. <laughs> Danny Graves cleared waivers today for the Cincinnati Reds, their all-time saves leader. Now, that shocked me a little bit. Will McEnany was there. And who was the right-hander they had there with the big red machine that was good? Pedro Borbone. Well, Bavone was there. Randy Myers had a lot of saves in the in the ugly. We, we, they weren't the ugly. What do they call? They were ugly, but Rod Dibble and pretty. But what I mean, what were those? The nasty the boys. The nasty boys, yeah. They ugly, nasty boys. So it to Gucci with two outs. John Franco, he just wasn't in uniform long enough to get that save total like he was in a Met uniform. You know, looking at looking at him in another uniform just doesn't seem right for John Franco. I mean, he needs to be. He should have retired in a Mets uniform. And a base hit the other way by Taguchi. Hops up with a the baseball. They'll respect his arm. Yadier Molina got an emphatic stop sign from Jose Akendo, the third base coach. Well, I got to the baseball in a hurry, but it's the way he fielded the ball and the exchange from glove to hand. And one thing he did very well there, he hit the cutoff man. A lot of times outfielders will overshoot your cutoff man, which allows the base runner heading to first to go on to second. You know what Davey Collins was telling me about Brad Hopp, and, and if you've watched Hopp throw the ball this year, you see what I'm about to say. Hopp doesn't get a lot of tail. A lot of lefties, George, as you know, they have that natural tail on the ball. Because he throws through the baseball. His extension is way out front. That's why you don't see a lot of tail from him. Davey Collins, who works with the Rockies outfielders, really impressed with the progress that Brad Hopp has made defensively. 0-1 on Pujols. Two outs, 2-1 two to one. St. Louis. We're in the second. Well, and look. did he go? He did. We'll yeah, check it out with Ted Barrett at first. Well, let's look back at how good Albert Pujols has been since 2001 through 05. Runs batted in. The leaders... Alex Rodriguez, how about that, at 550, Pools at 546, Tejada, your guy in Baltimore, 545, and I would have never guessed that. Ramirez had told me, I mean, Tejada's another one of those guys, Drew, that when he left Oakland, that's not an easy play either for Atkins. Low throw and help equal to the task. Fortunately, it was low enough that the hop was readable instead of one of those short hops, 2-1. 2-1 St. Louis, Matt Holiday will lead things off for the Rockies in the bottom of the second to be followed by Garrett Atkins, J.D. Klosser, Drew Goodman, George Frazier, Keith Blyer working in the ballpark tonight. Matt Morris's first delivery of fastball up high. Morris used to throw more consistently in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. A lot of surgeries, 86 to 90 now. He'll top out at 91 occasionally. Most of the time, you just don't see it anymore for Matt Morris, but they say this is a tough guy on the hill. Career record at 92 and 52. 40 games over 500 and a 352 ERA. He was a free agent at the end of last season, and he decided to sign and stay with the Cardinals because he felt comfortable there. You know they're going to have a very good team. And he signed for two and a half million dollars. A lot of money, obviously. But what Morris has put up in his career by his numbers, I mean, he could have commanded much bigger figures outside the Cardinals organization, probably. I mean, he has a lot of incentives as he walks Holiday. It could uh, add up to close to $7 million. Holiday wearing a microphone, we mentioned. Here's some of his work during batting practice. All right. You, go, you need me. No, I'm good. Oh, I'll try Q today. I'll try him out. <laughs> Get out of there, Q! Clint teasing Matt. He probably threw him batting practice yesterday. Matt went two for four, and he said, you need me out there for good luck. Yeah, he also throws that nice four-seamer, and Jamie Quirk cues who he's talking about. He has a tendency to want to cut some and make him work for those base hits a little bit. Which I think, in my opinion, is a hitter 
anybody can hit at five o'clock when it's 60 miles an hour down the middle. Put a little cut, a little sink to it. And the guy on the hill's not going to lay it in there at 60. At 7.05. We'd have different scores if that was the case. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be the uh, two to one finals as we had last night. How about the last four ball games here, George? Two to one last night, you know about. Five to four on Monday night. Then the last time the Rockies were home, 3-1-3-2. Three, 3 2 21 total runs over the last four ball games coming in tonight. Runner moving, hit and runs on, and Atkins fouls it off. 21 runs over four game span combined. When do you think the last time, or if ever, that had occurred at Coors Field? I can't, it hasn't. Jennings gave up six singles, two of those bunts in the ball game. Yeah, he was terrific. How about Watasik working three days in a row, too? He was pretty good. Broken bat slowly hit. Holiday trying to get to Eckstein. He couldn't get there in time because Eckstein completed the double play. up two. Well, the best part about the slide, it was clean. It was hard, but it was clean. They used to, years ago, you'd see a guy going with cleats up. You'd see him roll into the second baseman, shortstop, try to put him into left field. That was just a clean, hard slide, and middle infielders respect that versus the cheap shots. Breaking pitch, line down the right field line by J.D. Klosser. Over in right center was Cedeno, so it's an easy double for J.D. He's confident, grows and grows now offensively. He's chatting about it before the ball game. Sometimes you have to hit rock bottom, George, before you can turn things around. Yeah, absolutely. Really stayed back well on that pitch. He didn't jump out front on it. ball got down into the corner and Cedeno had a long way to go because he was pinching the gaps on J.D. Klosser but on an off-speed pitch J.D. got the hit out and pulled it. Well, let's see if Joe Kennedy can help his own cause. Oh. That pitch is low ball one. Klosser's reached base in eight of his last 13 plate appearances. This may surprise you talking about J.D. He's second to Helton and walks on the club. So, I mean, despite the poor start offensively, average south of 200, J.D. is working counts. Two zero swinging, two and, and one. And for Clint Hurdle, that means a lot because as a former hitting coach, he looks at guys' patience and the, how they handle their at bats. I tell you something, I've never met a player yet that enjoyed hitting 187. I tell you that. It's not like they're trying; they're working hard. Three and one. You know, Morris has had difficulty with the pitcher this year. What do you think they've hit against him, Drew? Try 353. Is that right? That's pretty good. Six for 17. Well, the pitcher keeps going back to the dugout saying the other eight guys, what's the matter with you? <laughs> yeah, you guys can't <laughs> get a knock? What's the deal? This guy's, this guy's beat. Here's the 3 1. Oh, I missed 3 and 2. Morris has not walked a guy in his last 17 in the third inning. There's nine walks total on the year. That's amazing. It's well, you know what? I, I forgot about Holiday. Holiday walked this inning. He did. Yeah. Doesn't count. And he just walked Kennedy. So his first two walks in a ball game and a half. First and second for Clint Barmas, who doubled his first time up.
You know why I didn't realize that Holiday walked? Because for some reason, George, I put down that he singled. Well, just trying to help his average out. Pretty good indication. Well, either way, he would have helped it out. The walk doesn't count as an official at bat. The, the single pushes up. He wouldn't have lost anything. Gained, yeah. a, gained a couple of points. Gained four with the base hit. Trying to help you, Matthew. Well, he's helping us. He's wearing the mic. He's helping us big time. Well, Yadier Molina goes out to visit with Matt Morris. I would think that's strange. George, later on in your career, when you had been a salty 8, 10-year veteran and a young catcher came out. I mean, Shut it, up and it, get back there. Was there automatic respect because he's in the big yes. leagues? Or, or well, you, you know, he'd come out and a lot of times, well, what do you want me to throw here? What are you going to do? What do you <laughs> want to do? What do you mean, well, I want to do? What do you think we ought to do? You know, you flip it back on them to see what their thinking is sometimes. Because, of, you know, a lot of times they come out and they look at you and go, so what do you want to do? Kind of showing well, proper you respect. Want to do? Well, yeah. You know the respect, well, what do you want to do? Well, I don't think he can handle the slider away. All right, well, let's go slider away then. So the guy hits a double, you go in the dugout, and he said, I think he handled it pretty good. <laughs> Next time, we won't go there. Farmers reaches, and it's popped up shallow right, and this could be a problem. The ball is loose. It is a problem. So Daniel couldn't come up with it. Kennedy to third. Klotzer scores. We're all tied up. Second time in this series. Remember a ball to right? Hit in his elbow, popped out of his glove against the wall. This is going to be a double, though, because of the run by Cedeno to get to the baseball. Why are they pinching the gap so much? I mean, this is why he had such a long run to get to the baseball. Off the end of the bat, he's not happy. He had a chance for an RBI. Well, guess what? You got an RBI. That, George, it's almost an identical play to the one Cedeno had the other day. Well, the other day he hit on his elbow and it popped out. This time he just never got it cleanly in the gloves. He had a ball just bounced around the glove. And it may have been with Grizzolani coming at him, he may have saw that shadow or foot, footsteps coming right at him and maybe taking his concentration off the baseball. He may need a bigger glove. Give him a butterfly now. <laughs> well, Barnes got 28 RBIs now. That ties Preston Wilson for the club lead. And it's a 2-2 game. Desi and RBI double. The Rockies have four hits, George. Double, 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 double. How many doubles? Four. Already? Already. That's a bunch. What's the most doubles the Rockies have ever had in a ball game? See, I just say things like that to watch that. <laughs> get busy. This one's a pool hole to run to the bag. So the Rockies get the equalizer on a blue double off the bat of Clint Barmas. We'll go to the third. Top of the third inning, the Rockies have tied up the Cardinals at two apiece. Joe Kennedy, Matt Morris hooked up. And let's go to Tim Ring in our studio across town. Tim. All right, Drew, thank you very much. They are wrapped up in the Big Apple, talking about the D-backs and the Mets. The Mets clinging to a 1-0 lead in the eighth, and Mike Piazza provides a little state farm. The double right there, Cliff Floyd scores, and they needed that run. The Mets win it 2-1. Doug Marino still celebrating up here. The Mets 2-1 to one win. Boy, the way you're celebrating, Doug, I hope they never win a World Series again, because holy cow, we won't keep you in the booth. By the way, the most, but most doubles hit by the Rockies in one game, nine, against the Chicago Cubs in 1993 on July 2nd. You know what, if memory serves me correctly, I think they had seven in a game earlier this year on Friday the 13th, and it was an 18-3 to three win. There was eight. There was six. I'm just listening. I'm playing around with Drew and Doug up here, guys. He was right. There was eight. I don't know how many there was. There was a whole bunch. I know that much. Reggie Sanders, 1-0 count. Foul straight back. Can't believe how many people, when I walked out to center field today, I always kind of take the second level, drop down, and go around the outfield wall. They, it's amazing how many people had baseball gloves today, and everything out of their mouth was, can you get another W like last night? What a great game, two to one. High tower this fly ball. They will have room. I don't 
think Matt saw that initially with the high sky, George. Well, I don't think he saw it with the high sky, and all of a sudden the winds have changed. Earlier, the wind was blowing straight down. Now, all of a sudden, it's carrying out over Matt's head into left field. Well, check out that man, the Cowboy, Tracy Ringlesby's column on the Rockies and Major League Baseball in the Rocky Mountain News. One out with Sanders retired, and that brings up Mark Grizzolanek. Well, in the National League, he leads all second basemen with his 3.31 average. This is high and deep, and it is off the bottom of the wall. Brad Hopp will fire it into second. So a one-out double for Grizzolanek. He's now two for two in the ballgame against Kennedy. Well, Grizzolanek's average at 3.31. Craig Council, 3.18. Ryan Friel, we'll see later on, 3.16. Loretta at 300. He's out, and Vigio's at 2.84. Scott Seaball got his first big league RBI his last time up. He got his first big league hit on May 14th against the Mets at Shea Stadium. That's an interesting spot for him to get it because he came up with the Yankees a few years back and he was up for 45 days with the Yankees and he got one at bat. I guess they didn't like what they saw. Yeah, it's a shame, too, when we get that opportunity. One at bat. Look good in BP. Yeah. Holy cow. One at bat? Well, that's, you know, that's the problem with the American League. Well, part of that problem is, too, you got him up there as an insurance policy, obviously, but the problem with that is now he goes back and he can't get his stroke back because he's set up there for 45 games. Yeah, how about that? 2001, one at bat with the Yankees. One and two on Seaball. Georgie has to wait four more years just to get back to the big leagues. Man, oh man. Got good minor league numbers. 284 career minor league hitter with 123 home runs. 31 last year at Memphis with a 304 average. And this ball is hit well left center field. It short hops the wall. Coming around to score is Grizzolanek. And it is a double for Scott Siebel getting the start at third base. And he has a two for two days so far and a couple of RBIs. Yeah, he tried to run that hook down and away from him. And this is a guy that looked like he read the pitch right out of the hand because that wasn't that bad of a pitch from Kennedy. You see a hitter go down like that on the outer half of the plate and hit it with that much of authority. That tells you he got a pretty good read on the pitch. Roger Cedeno with Seabowl at second, three to two St. Louis. And a clean single up the middle, Seabowl will score. Four to two. The Cardinals have at least two hits in every inning so far. Yeah, Larry Walker, Jim Edmonds, and Sanders in your outfield. Cedeno doesn't get many opportunities for RBIs. That is his eighth on the year. Line drive, one hop right out into center field. And pretty good speed by Seabull, so there wasn't any reason for Wilson to make that throw and allow Cedeno maybe the opportunity to move on to second base. Molina singled his first time. Seven hits in the ball game for St. Louis. In two and a third innings. You look at the lineup tonight, and you respect all major leaguers, but you have to be pleased if you're Joe Kennedy saying, well, I don't have to deal with Walker. I don't have to deal with Edmonds. And, and, and what you, you're right. You don't deal with the left-handed type situation, and both of those guys were here today at 2 o'clock taking early batting practice, trying to find their strokes. Change speeds on Molina. One ball, one strike.
Morris to follow Molina. With Kenny, he can induce a double play ball. Cedeno takes off. He's picked off. And the tag by Vargas. That's the second half. One, three, six on the caught stealing. Uh, executed perfectly by the Rockies. Snap throw and a tag by Varmus. Cedeno trying to do what he can do is outrun the baseball from help. You saw oh. what Todd did also. Go meet the baseball. Yeah, left-handers can really shorten an inning up. That yeah, ball was got knuckling a little bit. Good move to first base. <laughs> two more runs for the Cardinals. They're up four to two, middle of three. Matt Holiday, Joe Kennedy on the Rockies bench. The Rockies trailing the Cardinals 4-2 as we go to the bottom of the third inning. It'll be Todd Helton, Preston Wilson, Brad Hopp to lead things off. Do you know there's never been a one to nothing ball game in Coors Field? That doesn't surprise me. There's only been two two to nothing games at Coors Field. Didn't Tom Glavin, what was the score in his ball game in the, in the no-hitter? Was it two to nothing? Well, he didn't have a no-hitter here. You're talking about Nomo. Nomo. Uh, what was the score in that ball game? It was 10 nothing. You know, the other one, I think Brian Bohannon may have won a ball game here with the help of the bullpen. Do you know what, George? The two 2 to nothing games in 2 the Rockies shut out the Cubs 2 to nothing. That might have been the mighty bow. And they lost in 95 to Atlanta, and I think that's the game you're referencing, the Tom Glavin game, 2 right. to nothing. Complete game 2 to nothing. June 16th, the opponent, the other, Denny Nagel, was the starter versus the Cubs in that other ball game. No, so it wasn't Bohan, it was uh -uh. Nagel. Wilson, a little fly ball to center field his first time up. This ball in the air, left center field, playable. Got excited momentarily. And Reggie Sanders, and there's quickly two outs. That'll bring Brad Hopp to the plate. First two starting pitchers in this series for the Rockies, Jamie Wright and last night Jason Jennings. Pitched 13 combined innings, gave up one run on 10 hits. Popped up down the left field line. Long run for Eckstein. Sanders not the catch. Did he make that catch? Oh man, what a play by David Eckstein. Matt Morris, his biggest fan. A one, two, three inning. That's pretty good right there. 4 2 St. Louis. This is worth a third look. David Eckstein. On the foul pop up off the bat of Brad Hopp. That was a tremendous catch. We thought so. Here's what Matt Holiday thought of the catch. That might be one of the best catches I've ever seen. It was pretty good. Matt Morris to lead things off. And the first pitch from Joe Kennedy is high. You know what, Matt? It might be one of the best catches I've seen. That was tremendous. Where he had to go in, in the angle he was taking. Then all of a sudden, he just made a left turn and went and got the baseball. That's why he's in the big leagues. I mean, he mm -hmm. makes plays like that. He is the classic overachiever. Garrett Atkins with time, and he'll throw out. Matt Morris, one out. Joe Kennedy's in need of a low-pitch, easy inning. He's given up seven hits in the ballgame so far. Four runs. The first two runs that scored unearned. Eckstein reached on a throwing error by the second baseman Desi Relaford in the first and he would come around to score. On the outside corner for a strike. I mentioned Terry Kraft is working home plate. Ted Barrett at first. Alfonso Marquez at second. Rick Reed at third. Took something off. Kennedy's throwing the changeup quite a bit tonight. Well, I think because this is such a good fastball hitting team and he's gained confidence in throwing it in any situation behind or ahead. 
trying to show him the whole repertoire. Fastball, change up, curveball. Missed with the curveball, one and two. the chance for Garrett Atkins to go. Let's take a look at our athletic trivia question tonight. Drum roll, please. Affleck! Tony La Russa sits in second place on the Cardinals all-time wins list with 827 victories. Who is number one? And he's in the Hall of Fame. And when you go to Bush Stadium, you may just see him. One one on Sotoguchi. One ball, one strike. One ball, and two strikes. Two gone in the fourth inning. Rockies next inning will have Holiday, Atkins, and Klosser do up. And the changeup misses two and two. Until tonight, the Rockies had done a good job holding down this St. Louis offense with runners in scoring position. The cards were just one for 17. Talk so much about how the Rockies had problems. Taguchi played for Oryx in Japan from 92 through 2001, 10 seasons, and he's typically about a 275 hitter over there. He had one 300 season in 307, his third year in Japanese pro ball. Drops him in down the left field line. Holiday grabs it. Taguchi wide turn will stay at first. Pujols a walk in the first inning. He would come around to score on an RBI hit by Scott Siebel, and then he bats the third in the second inning. Watch his balance at the plate. You don't see him flail much. You don't see him fooled much. Well, part of that, I think, Drew, is this right here. I'm going to draw on it and show you. This wide stance right here prevents him from getting a lot of lower body movement that obviously would pull the upper body off of the pit. It reminds me a little bit of Bagwell. Bagwell spread out farther and crouched lower. But yeah, you didn't see a lot of movement out of Bagwell either. You just saw an explosion on the baseball. You know, with, with Pujols, he's just spread out. But he's so strong. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Albert takes that. He's in there for a strike, 1-2. The other thing, George, is you, know, you compare it to Jeff Bagwell, who actually took a step back toward his with his front foot back toward his back foot he just rises up on his toe pool holds well that tells you about his uh, upper body strength and as the game progresses against a certain pitcher that same starting pitcher stays in the ball game who has a tendency to hurt you and his average after the third time through 442 against that starting pitcher that's unbelievable that is unbelievable good inning for joe Ken. Matt Holiday leading things off. The Rockies trailing 4-2. to two. Let's learn a little bit more about Matt. Charles Schwab, player profile. I think probably I would consider my first big league game the game against the Cardinals when I started. 
just kind of taking it all in, uh, taking, you know, running out to left field the first time and taking in the crowd and the atmosphere was probably my, my best and biggest memory from my first game. Holiday sees the first pitch from Morris and smacks it right back up the middle. He's now hit 12 of his last 13 games, hitting better than 340 over the last 13. A good start to the inning. That'll bring up Garrett Atkins. Last time with Holiday at first after walking. A 1-1 pitch. The Rockies put Holiday in motion at the hit and run play on. That's had a couple of steals in this series. He has six on the year. That leads the ball club. Well, kids, you come out to the ball game on Friday, June 3rd. You'll receive a kid's bobblehead toothbrush holder, courtesy of Comfort Dental. The Reds will be in town. It'll be a 7:05 start. The gates open at 5:35, and everybody's healthy. Griffey, Kern, Dunn, Casey, Cincinnati, and Houston. Tonight, losing to the Astros 4 to 1 in the eighth inning. They're healthy, but they were upset with the fact that Danny Graves was let go, that he managed, the Angelo he managed was let go. I'm talking about the players were upset, especially with Graves, because Graves had been with them for a long time. Two balls and a strike. And Atkins drives it to left. Sanders again playing way over in the gap. And for that reason, on a base hit to left field, Matt Holliday is able to go first to third. You rarely see that. But you talk about squeezing the gaps. That's how Tony La Russa is playing his defense tonight. Let's watch and see how they set up. Freeze it up right here. I mean, they are really pinching out in the center field. You see Taguchi here. But their, their fielders are basically right here in that area. So it really opens up everything down the left field line. You can see how far Sanders and as deep as he is to come and get the baseball. Now take advantage of this first and third. <laughs> Again Matt Holiday wearing a microphone for us tonight. And we appreciate that. We'll talk to Clint Hurdle in the top of the sixth inning very briefly. Klauser starting to swing the bat. He doubled and scored in the second. Double was breaking pitch down the right field line. This is unloaded toward the gap in left center field, and it's cut off by Sanders. It'll work as a sack fly. But once again, J.D. Crosser puts the fat part of the bat on it, and he's got a little bounce in his step heading back to the dugout. Four to three after the ribby from J.D. Crosser. Matt Holiday also getting congratulations. Affleck! Affleck trivia question again. The Cardinals' all-time leader in managerial wins. It is not. Whitey Herzog, of course, it's Red Shane Deanst. 1,041 wins, so. How far behind is Tony? What, about 145, 150? Somewhere in that neighborhood. You know what? <laughs> well, we have a lot of time, but <laughs> at some point, yeah, you, you might want to pick up the baseball. Yeah, jo Joe kind of <laughs> sidestepped him. I mean, he, he, when he actually tried to pick it up, dropped it. Then he picks it up again. Of course, his arm is well documented and a very strong arm. Watch here. He picks it up. Oh, missed it. Yeah, let me get it. Let him run a little harder, just fooling with the arm. By the way, Delivers with 827, so 214 wins behind Red Shane Dees. Herzog won 821 games, so. LaRusso just recently passed him. See if Barmas can come through again. Oh, he rifles one down the left field line. That will tie up the ball game. Here comes Atkins to the plate. Another double for the Rockies. Barmas with two RBIs this evening and three doubles in the game. Whole new day at Coors Field in the fourth inning. It is 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, the bunt pays off by Kennedy, too. That slider just hung. Belt high for Barmas. 
and he roped it down the left field line. Well, Atkins, it's going to be pretty easy for him to come around to score to tie this ball game at four. Desi Relaford trying to give the Rockies the lead. He turns on one and drives it high and far and foul. Every once in a while with Desi, you never know. He can muscle up and hit one out on you. In fact, Relaford this year has three home runs. Make a mistake up in the strike zone and he will hurt you with an extra base hit. And still has a lot of power. Known more as a slap hitter, a speed guy. Singles, a leadoff man, a table setter and early in his career. Lately used in ball games as a utility infielder in his career and a guy that would pinch hit late in ball games. Changed his stance, delivery a little bit to the baseball. Desi's done a terrific job the first two months of this season. Good guy in the clubhouse, plays a lot of places for you. How about Barmas in what has been already a record setting rookie season for him? He's tied the club record with three doubles in this game. It's the 25th time a Rocky has produced three doubles in one ball game. In fact, it happened for the 24th time earlier this year, and Aaron Miles had three doubles in a game. Relaford line drive to right. Here comes Barmas around third. The throw from Cedeno. Did that hit Relaford? No, it hit off of uh, Pujols. It was cut. And they got by Molina behind, and the Rockies take 5-4 lead on the throw. Desi with his second RBI tonight. It's a single and an RBI for Relaford, E9 on Cedeno for allowing Desi Relaford to reach second base. Ball pulled to right field. You got good speed in Barmas, but they circled to the baseball. When this ball is thrown, watch Relaford think because he thought the ball was going to get by. He holds up. He thinks he's a dead duck, but the ball hit off of Albert Pujols. And look at Barmas come around to score. Relaford at second. Todd Helton the chance to drive in a run for the Rockies and make it six to four. I got to show you real quickly what happened on that throw from Cedeno. It looked as if Pujols was going to try to cut the ball off, but it's short hopped him. See ricocheted off of the glove by Molina. Then here you can see Morris coming into your screen to go get the baseball. That allowed everybody to move up. I mean, for Relaford to get to second. Todd waited on that one, tried to drive it to left. He fouled it off 0-2. There are two outs. The Rockies with three in the inning lead 5-4. to four. Guys at the top of the lineup have done a nice job. Barmas and Relaford a combined five for six in the ball game, with four RBIs and two runs scored. Todd turns and yanks that to Colorado Springs. <laughs> Take the yeah. The, wait a minute, that I mean, 82 mile hour slider. How did he do that? I mean, Brian Peters high first kick. He could have dove and caught the ball. Holy cow! Just a little foul. Todd, ground ball up the middle, on through. Here's Relaford around third. And the RBI drought is over. Helton comes through behind in the count and makes it 6-4. to four. That was vintage Todd Helton. Boy, is it nice to see, too. Smile, Todd. You deserve it. Battling through this type of a slump. 
Fastball tried to sink it away from him. Helton stayed right on the pitch, took it right back up. Look at the leg kick. Freeze it right there. Look at that. Boy, it's so pretty. Look at the extension, but the hands back, the arms back. And as the baseball gets to the plate, just the explosion away, and the head right on the baseball. And Wilson smokes it up the middle, but shading there is Grizzolanic. That had base hit all over it, but Grizzolanic was basically right up the middle in a bit of a shift. Rockies produced four runs. They're up 6-4 as we go. Game reset. Let's just reset last inning. The Rockies four runs on five hits. J.D. Klosser a sack fly. And then the third double of the ball game from Clint Barmas scored Garrett Atkins. Desi Relaford comes through. And Barmas scores. And then Todd out behind in the count. Rips it up the middle to bring home Relaford. Rockies down 4-2 about 10 minutes ago. Now they lead 6-4. As Joe Kennedy gets set to work to Reggie Sanders, Mark Rezolanik, and Scott Siebel. 4-5-6 and six in the St. Louis lineup. Did he go? You bet. Strike one. For Todd Helton, that RBI was his first since May 18th. And by the way, it was his 527 RBI at Coors Field. That's the all-time mark, seven ahead of, you guessed it, Larry Walker. I want to go back to the scouting report on Joe Kennedy, and there's a part of it here you need to see and look at. I said in the middle of this, the middle of the lineup, he had to be very careful of. Well, tonight, they're four for six, three home runs and three RBIs. One and two on Reggie Sanders. Well, I want to correct myself. The middle of the lineup, I had misread that from Doug Marino. The middle of the lineup coming in, four, five, and six, had hurt him with three home runs and 14 RBIs. Tonight, the middle of the lineup for the St. Louis Cardinals, Pujols 0 for 2, Reggie Sanders 0 for 2, Mark Grezelanik 2 for 2 with a run scored. He's done a nice job with the middle of the lineup. Yeah, Grizzolanik's the only guy who's given him big problems. Mark with uh, also an RBI. <laughs> Swung on, foul tip. And that is strike three on Reggie Sanders. So a good start to the fifth inning for Joe Kennedy. A longtime third base coach for Tony La Russa. Jose Akendo is a fine middle infielder. Talked about his golf game in seasons past. He's a basically a scratch golfer. If you mm -hmm. happen to notice him at the clubhouse or whatever, at your Run. local golf club, right. Don't don't try Run. to engage in. Or ask, hey. say, can I put a little action on you? Right, exactly. <laughs> you bet on him, don't bet on yourself. Jose's terrific. But I learned something about Jose because I was asking him about his meth days. Here's Grizzle on it. And he takes a strike. And I said, do you keep in contact with anybody from, from your days with uh, New York? Because I remember watching him growing up. And, and he said, yeah, because I keep in contact with Mookie Wilson all the time. He's, he's the godfather of my kids. A little tie there as that uh, gets on through past Clint Barmas for a base hit. So Grizzle on it is three for three. So he's known uh, Preston Wilson for quite a few years. For a few years, you're right. Seabull's also two for two in the game. Oh, and he takes a strike. Rockies have five doubles in the game. And the Cardinals have a couple of doubles. Seabull's double to deep left center field. And it's 0-2. Tomorrow, we're on the air at 1 p.m. right here on FSN Rocky Mountain. Supon and Sean Chacon, and guess what? Sebo is three for three like the guy in front of him, Grusalonic. So 
George, you made an error when you put your scouting report together. Pujols, Sanders, they're chopped liver. You, I mean, yeah, you should have been focused on at the bottom. Should have been and Seabull. Wow. Seabull's having a night. I'll tell you that right now. You look at the special instructors the Cardinals bring to camp every year. Lou Brock, he's pretty good. That's not a bad guy. To Hall of Fame, 293 average. Have a round. Stole 938 bases. There's another guy they bring in occasionally. Bob Gibson. Was he any good? <laughs> 251 and 174. A 291 earned run average. How about the year he had a 112? Mm -hmm. He's pretty good. Three. 22 and 9. With a 112. 304 innings pitched, 268 strikeouts. And you know the most impressive thing about that whole season, Drew? That is a foul ball. What's that? You talked about the 112. Think about this, 304 innings. He had, what, 30 complete games? Yeah, but that, that's impressive. 30. He actually had 34 starts, 28 complete games. Okay. He walked 62. 62 and 300 some odd innings? 304 innings. He walked 62. He was pretty good. Yeah, not bad. He only walked over 100 in just two seasons. Oh, and the other guy, Red Shandies. 0-2, oh, strike three. See you later. Sudanio caught looking. That's the second out. And jumping in there very quickly is the kid, Yadier Molina, to keep Sudanio around. Hey, you got to come up with a big pitch. You do it. Throws him on the inside with a fastball. First two strikeouts of the ball game for Joe Kennedy here in the fifth. Yeah, do you think this pitch is high? Crossed right across the belt, framed by Closser. Molina is one for two. Grizzolanik at second, Seabulls at first. Rockies ahead six to four. This ball game already in stark contrast to last night, a two to one ball game. It's 19 hits, 10 runs. It's produced 19 hits. Hey, don't I want to just mention real quick, Drew, June 4th, it is Fuji and King Super's photo day at the ballpark. You can come through gates A and D. It starts at 3.30, ends at 4.30. Bring your cameras, take your picture of your favorite Rocky player. Well, even though you got a 2-1 count, Grezelanik with a gigantic lead at second. The Rockies choose to keep their defense in place to try to get the ground ball in the out. You start to think about it. Why would he want to try to steal third base with your third, with your with your eight-hole hitter up and your pitcher due up next? No way. Well, unless Tony's trails by two that he's thinking he might pinch hit too. Well, typically, LaRusse is a guy that'll stick with his starter a little bit longer given that opportunity. We'll find out right now. Base is loaded. You, go, swing it. you bet. Third time in the series that the Cardinals have had the bases loaded documented where they've hit over 300 as a ball club with the bases loaded this year. Morris, a career 164 hitter. And this year, 118 coming in. And he tried to throw a slider and missed. 1 0. And as a team, they're down to 308. They entered the series at 326. Bases full of Cardinals in the fifth. Two singles and a walk.
strike three on the outside corner. So Kennedy pitches his way out of it. He ends up striking out the side. The Rockies lead by two, middle of five. Fifth inning, the Rockies leading six to four. Clint Hurdle's been kind enough to join us in the dugout. It's got to be good to see your club hitting with runners in scoring position tonight, Clint. Well, yeah, 10 for 100 in our last stretch coming in, we're due. And it was good to see us string three good at-bats together with two outs there and some runners in scoring position. Yeah, Kennedy worked out of a little jam last inning. How do you feel you'll set up tonight? I know Wittosik's gone three days in a row. Well, we'd, we'd rather not use him. If we use him and Tito both tonight, that's uh, four nights for Wittosik, three for Tito. They'd both be done tomorrow. I think we'll get, uh, we'll see how this inning plays itself up. We got Neil for maybe one or two. We got Anderson and maybe Fuentes to close. All right, good luck the rest of the way, Thank Clint. you. All right. Six to four, the Rockies lead. They hit with Brad Hopp, Matt Holliday, and Garrett Atkins. Here in the bottom of the fifth, coming off a four-run fourth inning to take the lead against Matt Morris. Hop tonight, ground ball to second. And he was robbed, not of a hit, but of at least continuing his at bat his last time up because he had a high pop down the left field line in foul territory, and David Eckstein made one of the better catches you will see. In fact, if you didn't see it already, you'll see it again this evening on our broadcast. I'm sure you'll see it later on tonight on the Rocky Mountain Sports Report and other late-night sports shows. It'll be on a few highlight reels. Yeah. One ball, one strike on Hopper. Here's the catch. You Wait. asked for it. How about that, huh? I mean, he, and he just changed angles, went after it. That's just so much concentration. That's the only thing that got him there. Plus, you know what, George? It's not his ballpark. What I mean by that is, you know, you're running in foul territory. Once, I would imagine once there's a player, you cross that white line. It's a little bit of foreign territory. You have the well, warning track, but... It was certain players, Drew, I would say you're probably right. But with this guy, I think it wouldn't matter with a brick wall or plexiglass or whatever's over there. He's going to run into it to try to make a play. Certain players you would have saw pull up, just let the ball hit. Yeah, I think you're right. First strike out of the ball game for Matt Morris. Here's what's on tap brought to you by Budweiser. Tomorrow, 1 p.m., we're on the air on FSN Rocky Mountain. The Cardinals will depart after the ball game and they'll change out the visiting clubhouse for the Cincinnati Reds coming in. And Friday and Saturday, 6.30 and 5.30, we're on the air with the pregame show on FSN Rocky Mountain. And then Sunday afternoon on UPN 20 at 1 p.m. with the Cincinnati Reds. Holiday, one for one and a walk. He's mad on that close call, first pitch. Morris George he pitched open day 2002 and I mean his he was 94 to 96 and he had the over the top curveball nasty and the over top hook he changed speeds with you'd see it at 78 you'd see it at 84 you'd see it at 65 slowly hit this could be a leg hit for holiday no chance for Siebel he's playing way behind the bag and Matt has himself a swinging bunt. He's two for two and a walk. Speed aboard with one out for Colorado. Let's go to the studio and Tim Ring. All right, Drew, we go to Philadelphia. How about this? Game tied at six in the eighth. Latroy Hawkins, new venue, same results. Gives up a gives up a granny here to Chase Utley. Philly wins it 10-6. Poor, La poor Latroy. <laughs> yeah, San Francisco's hurting right now. Yeah, they're bullpen right now. It is comes back I didn't think it'd be till July that their bullpen would suffer with the appearances and what they do and, and again you're talking about Walker you're talking talking about Brower you know I mean those type of guys get hurt they go down her just released I mean it you know, designated for assignment today surprise to him hard shot Epstein's done it again 
They just turn a base hit into a double play. That was a phenomenal stop. Yeah, you're shaking your head. So is everybody else in attendance, Gary. Keith Blyer from Coors Field. All right, George, go ahead and say it. Look who's up. Yeah, imagine that. Huh? After a great play, he'd come to the plate to lead off the six. Wouldn't you know it? David Eckstein. Kennedy's pitch count at 95. And he's due up next inning, so you figure necessarily. It depends how this inning goes. Rockies is. Clint Hurdle told you, a little bit short in the bullpen tonight. Jay Witasik has gone three straight days. Fuente's gone a bunch lately. And look at this, down the right field line. Hops to the baseball very quickly. Eckstein will not advance past first. Lane Neal is throwing in the Rockies' pen as we speak. Gucci two for three tonight. Kennedy upset with the execution of that particular pitch, 2 0. Deguchi with a couple of hits tonight, had been three for his previous 29 at the plate. And 3 0. 6 4 Colorado. You don't want to create a problem here. First two runs against Joe Kennedy tonight were unearned in the first inning. And then he gave up two earned runs in the third. Got out of a bases loaded situation last inning. And now he has walked to Gucci. Two men on, nobody out for Albert Pujols. Well, Matt Holliday, as you know, wearing a microphone for us tonight. Here was an interesting play in the outfield a couple innings ago. Look like an idiot. <laughs> it's checked up. <laughs> you gotta go to the glove first, yeah. though. All right? Yeah. Act like I have it. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Is Matt? Matt looked behind him, and it wasn't there. Well, the Rockies are gonna go ahead and make a double switch right now with Clint Hurdle. He's gonna take Joe Kennedy out of the ball game. Blaine Neal will come in. We'll tell you about the other change as well when you return. Joe Kennedy done. He goes five plus innings. He gives up 11 hits in the ball game, and of the runs he allowed, again four runs, two earned. On the double switch, Luis Gonzalez comes in. Garrett Atkins goes out, so Gonzo will hit second next inning in the pitcher spot, and Garrett Atkins seven hole becomes the pitcher spot. And who holds in against Blaine Neal with two on and nobody out. The Rockies ahead six to four. Yeah, what you're trying to create, obviously, the double play ball. Very difficult to do this as a fly ball hitter, a guy that can drive the ball into the gap. Try to bring Neal in and let that sinker work. Last outing, two scoreless innings Saturday at Wrigley Field, and this ball is laced, base hit. Now, the runner at second base, Eckstein, had to wait to make sure Barnes didn't make the catch. So the bases will be loaded with nobody out for Reggie Sanders. First hit since Monday night for Albert Pujols. Sanders to this point is 0 for 3. He's 
saw the average at 245, but this is one dangerous 245 hitter. Well, Ten not, home runs. Mm -hmm, you're not lying. In your middle infield, it's going to play deep. Normal, I should say, double play depth. And the last grand slam for Sanders was at St. Louis on August the 20th, 2003. And he wasn't playing for the Cardinals then. Mm -hmm. Playing for the Pirates. 2 0. Oh. Such a disciplined hitter when he's ahead in the count. If you're able to work ahead, which Neil has not, he will chase a breaking ball out of the strike zone. Last night, and really the first night, nobody could get a hit with a runner in scoring position. And tonight, both teams have excelled. A combined 11 for 21. Here's the 2 0 to Sanders slider. And it's fouled off. Grizzolanic, who's three for three, is on deck. Luis Gonzalez, a couple of steps behind the bag at third. As George described, up the middle, the Rockies looking for two. They'll give up a run to get two outs. But Sanders, not an easy guy to double up. I mean, not at all. I mean, Reggie, maybe in his late 30s, he's 37. But he still runs well. well. Great physical shape, too. Sanders works very hard in the offseason to stay in his top form and allow him to play this game as long as he can. Two balls, two strikes. See if Neil goes to the slider again. He does, and it's popped up down the right field line. Foul ground, and that works its way out of play. That was a ball, George, earlier tonight. When you said the wind was blowing straight down, <laughs> that came back into play, but now the wind is blowing. Hey, look at the flags out on the scoreboard, down, out over the rock pile. The wind's starting to blow over the first base back. In other words, it's blowing into the stands on the right side, so that's going to create the movement. Thought initially when it went up, Helton may have had a play. Pitch by Neil he jammed Reggie Sanders. Actually, the pitch was supposed to be on the outside part of the play, but fortunately, he missed enough that he jammed it. Eckstein's at third, he singled. Taguchi walked, he is at second. Puholt singled, he's at first. Rockies ahead, six to four. Trying to take two or three from the Cardinals. They'll play one more tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, he's tried to overthrow the sinker at 93 miles an hour, trying to make the perfect pitch. Has to overthrew it. Down in the strike zone, though. Now three, two count. Clint studying those books. He's trying to look at numbers, matchups. Who might be next to get up in the bullpen? Ball four. Oh! Strike three on the swing. Ted Barrett, when they checked it out, threw the right arm and said he swung. Reggie Sanders. Wasn't even looking. He didn't believe it was even close. He was a third of the way up the line. Yeah, you know what? I think he stuck the bat out over the area of the plate. That's what got it called. Look at it again. As he aggressively went after that pitch out front, tried to lock the wrist up. Klosser asked immediately. Ted said, your history. Now with a double play, you can get out of the inning without any damage. Grizzolanic has been perfect tonight, three for three, however. Slider misses there, one and oh. Grizzolanic with the three hits tonight has the average up to 343. And he comes through again. Line single to center. Here's the throw from Wilson. 
And it will hold the runner at third base, Taguchi. Grizzolonic four for four with a couple of RBIs. It is six to five, Colorado. A good fastball hitter, already behind on a 1-0 count with a slider, and he went fastball again. Grizzolonic, another base hit. Wilson timed this perfectly, and, and the one-hop throw into J.D. Klosser prevented Taguchi from moving on in from third base. Grizzolonic four for four in this ball game. Jim Edmonds has been called upon now to pinch hit for Scott Siebel. So Tony La Russa in the sixth inning sensing a great opportunity. And he will bring back the kid who's three for three and two RBIs and replace him with Jim Edmonds. Now Edmonds this year is a pinch hitter, one for three. Cedeno in the lineup tonight is the one guy that predominantly uses a pinch hitter. He, uh, he's had 21 at bats as a pinch hitter. And Edmonds hits it high in the air to deep left field. Should get the run home. Holiday makes the catch. Taguchi will come across to tie it up at six. So a sack fly off the bat of Jim Edmonds. And it is a six to six affair. Both of those runs credited to Joe Kennedy's account. And now the book closed on Joe. He gives up six runs, four earned in five plus innings. Uh, Nunez is going to get a chance to hit now for Cedeno because they'll do the switch with Nunez going to third base. Edmonds will go to center and Taguchi will go to right. You know, the interesting thing about doing that there, George, if you have Cedeno bat, if he so desired, he could have double switched and gone to his bullpen and then put Nunez in the nine hole. But I imagine he wants to keep stay with Morris, and that's why he elects to put Nunez up right now. Yeah, he just has the trust of the veteran, give him an opportunity to win. And Tony talked about it today after managing, playing here in Denver, that he realizes his minor league days realizes you're going to have a lot of nine to six, ten to nine wins. And your starting pitcher is going to maybe go seven or eight innings in that game. Yeah. Nunez forgot to take the donut off his bat. <laughs> Leave the lead bat in the on deck circle with the donut. Do not take it to the plate with you. But he's okay over the crowd. It was a scary moment when you see those wicked line drives. Cubs right now in the third inning doing it again to the Dodgers. They're four to nothing. Cubs starting to play good baseball. Oh and two on Nunez. Up started at a six and a half behind these Cardinals. Slowly hit it, help. Neal gets over there and he tags the bat. In the inning, two runs for St. Louis. And they've tied this ball game at six as we go to the bottom of the six. Morris in the sixth inning will see J.D. Klosser, then Luis Gonzalez and Clint Barb is the top of the order. 
some changes defensively. We talked about it last inning. Jim Edmonds stays in the ball game at center field. There's Edmonds. Taguchi slides over to right field. And the new third baseman is the guy who made the last out last inning, Abraham Nunez. J.D. has swung the bat well again tonight. Double down the right field line. And a line drive into the gap in left center field that was caught, but it was a sack fly because J.D. is last time up. Came up with runners at first and third. Center field for Edmonds. One out. Let's touch base again with Tim Rank. Tim? All right, Drew showed you a grand slam last time we talked. How about another one? This one not quite as dramatic, but the Pirates are already up 5-1. Rob McCoviak pretty much puts the Marlins to bed with a granny here. Buckos win at 9-1. Drew. You know what? The Bucks, Tim, are playing very good baseball. The Giants, your last update or not, the Giants have lost six in a row, but Pittsburgh in that Central Division, they've won three straight. McCoviak's having a good year. Yes, he is having a great year, but to do that down in Florida, I just didn't anticipate them to be able to go in against the Marlins. Tonight, a 9-1 to one winner. Marlins have lost three in a row. Oh, and two on Gonzalez. series next time oh, wait, he's played tonight wrong spot to go there hey start your weekend early Friday on the rocks at the uh, Coors Field come to the ballpark on Friday June 10th for a 305 game and you can come to the park for peanuts how about that for only twenty dollars you get two field level tickets two packs of peanuts a parking pass and a game program 305 on Friday, June 10th, trip twos across the board. How about that, huh? Two tickets, two packs of peanuts, a parking pass, a program. It's only good for every 305 Friday afternoon game in June, July, and August. Don't miss the amazing deal. Pick up your Friday at the, the Rocks Pack at Coors Field Ticket Office. Or just call 1-800-388-ROCK. Farmers has not hit a double in a while. He needs a double. Stays off that 0-2 slider. It's 1-2. Two. two outs, nothing cooking for the Rockies in the sixth. We are tied at six. 13 hits for St. Louis, 10 for Colorado. Borm is so quick on that inner half. That's where Morris tried to get the fastball there. And if you miss there, and it's over the plate. He'll clobber it. This ball is hit pretty well, but it's playable for Reggie Sanders. A 1 2 3 inning for Morris in the sixth. We turn the page to inning number seven. Nothing decided. Tied up. Top of the seventh inning, tied up at six. Matt Holiday's had a good day. Two for two and a walk at the plate. Here's his last hit. He got all of it. Yeah, I know. I didn't even run hard. I didn't have to. That was the best bun I've ever had. I mean, placement was phenomenal. <laughs> they all look like a line drive in the morning's paper. Yadier Molina steps it. Preston had said right before that, he said, he said, dude, you swung as hard as you could. Ball went two feet. <laughs> Oh, 
Molina, one for two. A walk his last time up. Nobody throwing right now in the Rockies' bullpen. But Clint Hurdle, as he said when we chatted with him a couple of innings ago, he was hoping Neal could eat up an inning or two. And it looks like it's going to be two. And Molina on four pitches walks. Well, now Tony Larusa will go to his bench. And, well, sort of. George, he's going to go back to another pitcher instead of Matt Morris hitting for himself, Jason Marquis will hit. Well, two of the five guys he has on the bench, they're gone. Diaz, he's not going to use. He's the backup catcher. So he's not going to come into the game. So really, you're down to two guys, Mabry Walker. And with Marquis, don't think that he won't swing the bat either. 286 average. And, he, and if you're wondering why not Larry Walker here, I'm sure he's saving Walker for later in the ballgame. Marquis, 0 for 2, pinch hitting this year. Jason, last year, led the National League with 21 hits as a pitcher. And he is kind of, uh, not kind of, he's a lot like Hampton. Mike Hampton with the Atlanta Braves. Oh, While well, they're visiting on the mound, let me tell you about a great Coca-Cola value pack. It's back for two dates in June and one in July. For the old, for only 49 bucks, four out, outfield box seats, four or hot dogs, four Coca-Cola fountain drinks, a parking pass, and a game program. They are available June 6th when the White Sox are in town. They're available again July 25th. When the Mets come to town. It works out. Marquis broken bat, single to left. Again, George, he has gone against the book talking about LaRusa every time this series when it came to a bunt situation with Jason Marquis up there. He is that or Marquis missed a lot of signals. <laughs> well, I mean, he could have kept Morris up there. Morris had oh, a clean sacrifice in the yep. second if he wanted to sacrifice. He didn't go in that direction. He brought up Marquis, swings away, and it's first and second, nobody out. And a good athlete, leaving there to run the bases. Has very good speed on the base pack. Now see if he has Eckstein lay down the butt. He gets second and third. All right, and he told me last uh, tonight, prior to the game, that he said, I don't know why I punted in the eighth inning. Well, he's going to punt in the seventh, mm -hmm. George. Neal's not going to get the baseball, and everybody's safe. Blaine didn't look comfortable jumping off the mound there. He's a big, strong man. And he didn't get down to where the ball was. It was placed perfectly obviously by Eckstein and now you yeah, after the infield hit the bases are loaded nobody out well he puts this ball down trying to bunt it hard up the third baseline Neil overruns the baseball tried to get there to cut it watch the angle so he's going to charge it it's hit harder than he anticipates and gets by his glove now here's why Walker didn't hit a moment ago he's going to hit for Taguchi right now and then he'll go in and play right field so La Russa has made a number of moves the last inning or so. And he has got Larry Walker coming up with the bases loaded, nobody out in the place he used to call home. And Clint Hurdle is not going to allow Blaine Neal to face Larry Walker. We'll step aside. 6-6 six, six ball game. Coors Light game reset. The Rockies were ahead 6-4 in the sixth inning, but the Cardinals behind Mark Rizalonic with an RBI base hit. And a sack fly off the bat of Jim Edmonds tied the game at six. And here's the matchup. Nobody out, bases loaded again in the seventh. And Byung Young Kim, who has not appeared since Saturday when he made an emergency start for Sean Chacon, will face Larry Walker. Two for nine lifetime versus Kim. That's what Walker's done. And this is his 18th appearance, very high earned run average. Walk strikeouts dead even. Four strikeouts versus Kim for Larry Walker. If Kim can translate his starts to his relief appearances, he'll be doing all right. 
And on through, JD's got a chance to scramble it back. Oh, Molina got hurt. Molina broke down the line, and he either pulled the muscle or turned an ankle. He put on the brakes and went back to the bag. They may have had a play on him because Klosser on the ricochet got to the ball quickly. But I, I'm almost sure Molina's probably done for the evening at least. I mean, he barely made it back to the third base bag. Well, you want to. I mean, he's going down looking at his ankle right now. And let's, let's look and see what happens as the ball squirts away from J.D. Klosser. It ricochets off of those new bricks right back to him, and then Molina tries to stop, and it looked like he turned his left ankle. We'll take another look at it here. Now watch when this ball gets away. Well, he's not ready to go anyway because he's got his hands on his knees. Watch the ankles. Oh, right there. See it? He's going to hobble his way back right now. Now Tony La Russa came out of the dugout. He wanted to turn his hat around backwards, backwards and scratch his head because he's thinking, wait, I got, I got rid of him. I can't believe this. They're going to let him stay in the game. Well, I probably told him he could stay in the game. You know, he tried to run a moment ago. <laughs> so like he, he didn't really run very well. Might have the Bobby Mercer thing working. Drag the bat up to the plate. Don't look like you can run past your shadow. And all of a sudden, bang, and take off. Fly up the line. 1-0 and on Walker. <laughs> one and one. 86 mile an hour fastball but again to that inside part and rising but your catcher right now your senses your senses are heightened because the base are loaded obviously but you have a guy up there who's been a little bit inconsistent hitting the strike zone J.D. Claus are ready to scramble. Great numbers with the bases loaded in the career of Larry Walker. Yeah, 292 average, seven grand slams this season. He's one for three with four RBI. Round ball, Barmas gloves it. There's one on the first. Good pickup out at first. Now the go-ahead run scores. But the Rockies turn over a beautiful double play, 6-4-3. The Cards do have a 7-6 lead. Good pickup by Barmas on a hard hit ball. Look at the back flip over and an exchange out of the glove. That's the key. Second night in a row, Desi's gotten wiped out at second base, but he's been able to complete the double play. Great concentration by Relaford. Marquis at third. Who holds up there? I mean, I know, I know that's a tough situation here. But I'm looking at Albert Pujols versus Reggie Sanders. I think I'd rather take my chances versus Sanders. He's 0 for 8. Pujols 1 for 5. But just based on the reputation of what Pujols has been able to do in baseball games. I agree with you. And again, that school of thinking is don't give him a pitch to hit, but Kim this year has demonstrated enough control that you're going to feel real confident with him hitting his spots. Yeah, he's set up on the outside corner. There's a case of point. That slider broke over the inside corner. Yeah, I mean, uh, you make a great point there. His consistency in, in, within the zone has not been good. See if he can make one more pitch, though. He's ahead one and two. The Rockies get out of this, which is one run. Allowed. Bases loaded, nobody out. They'll have done very well. And he's not an easy catch. No, he is not. I guarantee you, Klosser will be on his toes. Who holds singled his last time up? And that gets on by. And it 
it's eight to six. A near wild pitch to Larry Walker. And then Kim uncorks a wild one that allows the run to come around. Marquis scores to make it eight to six St. Louis. Yeah, look again. I mean, this is that slider trying to paint the corner. I mean, it painted it away from him. And not fairness to J.D., normally you'd say runner on third, block the baseball. Well, he's not going to be able to block a ball that's thrown into the left-handed batter's box. There's no way he could block that. No. He did the best he could to try to backhand the ball just to keep it out in front of him. Three twos fouled off. Was the sixth wild pitch of the season by Byung Young Kim, which leads the Rockies staff. He has inherited seven runners, including tonight. Six of those seven have scored, and that is one of the huge measuring sticks, measuring sticks for a manager as far as having you come in the middle of the innings. Are you doing your job out of the bullpen? world George when the Rockies had to pull Joe Kennedy in the sixth inning if everybody's available you may have seen Acevedo in there hoping to get him through the seventh inning then you hand it to Atasic and then Fuentes but it's not a perfect world because Acevedo's on the disabled list with Tosic has thrown three straight days Anderson had thrown three straight because he had pitched two in Colorado Springs and one here. Had yesterday off. So that's a still. And you're probably saving him for eighth the inning. eighth inning. And with Cortez and the youngest man in Major League Baseball, Carvajal, they haven't really utilized those two in close ball games on the plus side. Or in this particular case, at least initially in this inning, close ball games. But a tie. This ball hit the deep center field. Wilson going back. We'll have to play. Sanders a long out in the inning. Two runs come around on three hits. Eight to six, St. Louis. Larry Walker stays in the ball game in right field. He hit for So Taguchi. The Rockies down eight to six, bottom of inning number seven, and the new pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals is Randy Flores. There's Flores, take a look at his numbers. Seventeen ball games he's appeared in on the year, 432 earned run average. Impressive that 17 strikeouts. More impressive, left-handed batters have hit just a buck 29. Helton in the on-deck circle. Desi Relaford will lead it off. Desi, two for three, single and a double, a couple of RBIs. Helton's one for three in the game with an RBI, and then Wilson do third. Wilson is 0 for three in the game. Brad Hopp, if the inning continues. Let's see if Colorado can get after that Cardinal bullpen. Flores, one of three left-handed pitchers in the St. Louis bullpen. A bullpen that has only given up four earned runs in its last 29 in a third inning. It's funny, I was asking somebody with the Cardinals 
if there was a weakness, where would it be? And they said, well, you know, probably the bullpen, even though they pitch well. I mean, if that's you, a weakness. Well, they're, wow, they're pretty good. They are pretty good. I mean, Israel has been lights out. But I mean, that's that's the point there. You, know, you just got to nitpick to find a weakness. Well, Thompson, he pitched in last night's ball game hard, hard sinker, slider you know, two nights ago. Excuse me. Leslie's got a five game hitting streak going. Fouls that pitch off one and two. Dodgers have closed to within one of the Cubs. It's 4 3. They're still in the fourth inning. And Relaford will have another base hit. Just waiting on that breaking pitch and served it to right. That'll bring Helton up. about Desi and the St. Louis Cardinals in his career he's hitting over 330 against the Cardinals we'll see Molina asking for the ball down in the strike zone wow he got it there that ball looked outside too. Help and ask. Home plate umpire Terry Kraft the same question. They give the glance back to see exactly what he was thinking about. That takes a hop off the mat right to Eckstein. He's going to turn it into a twin killing. Now well, David Eckstein has had an extraordinary night defensively. Yeah, no question the plays that he's made in this game. To Save, probably have one of the best you'll see in a game of baseball. Then this double play back up the middle. And flip over. It does a lot. The completion of the double play. And just another one here. Get two outs in the seventh. Dave Duncan's going to go out to the mound and visit with the youngster with Wilson up. Cardinals up two runs. Make sure that they're on the right page. They have the right hander Thompson up, but that was only with a man on. Hops in the on deck circle. So, in a perfect world, if you're able to get Wilson to end it here in the seventh, you leave him in the face, hop in the eighth. But the number that jumped out at you for Flores is the left handers hitting 129. Well, Preston went around, it's 0 2. Flores hit the target by Molina. Target was three you feet outside. You're looking yeah. like, what is he throwing to? Are you kidding me? How about Molina? The way he reacted, I thought he pulled something badly. <laughs> I thought that was the last we'd see a yacht here for a while. But when you're 22, George, you heal quickly. Yeah, you do. About a minute and a half. And it turns into a 1 2 3 inning for Flores. He gave up the hit to Relaford. He was erased on a double play ground out. Off the bat of Todd Helton will go to the eighth inning, 8 to 6 Cardinals. From the state capital of Colorado, lower downtown Denver, Mark Rosalonic steps in. Eight to six, the Rockies trail in the eighth inning. Young Young Kim continues on. Joe Kennedy, Matt Morris were the starters in the ball game. Right now, the pitcher of record on the downside for the Rockies is Neal. I think 
be their first tonight, George. First time the Rockies have wow. retired Mark Rizzolani. So Edmonds comes up for the second time in the game. Came in as a pinch hitter in the sixth and hit a sack fly. Morris has a chance to go to 6 and 0. Could be one of those magical seasons for Morris to where you get wins like this when it's eight to six. And when you win 20 games in a season, you have to have a lot of luck and you need this type of game one or two a year. Or one or two over the course of the year, I should say, in order to have that chance to win 20. Yeah, that's generally the case. Edmonds is gone. King strikes him out. Yeah, and looking back at this ball game tonight, I mean, this is like a, a four to two game because of course field the ball was flying. A lot of doubles hit. Yeah, there been no balls hit out of the ballpark no. if you're just jumping on board. 27 combined hits, 14 combined runs after a stretch towards field where if you scored three or four, it was a pretty good night offensively. 21 runs combined over the last four games coming into tonight. One and zero on Nunez. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Colorado Rockies and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Rockies. And the two O's fouled off, two and one. Rockies all time, 59 and 55 against St. Louis. May surprise you a bit. How about the uh, Cardinals coming off an 18 and 11 May? Their best month of May since 1971. And they have now put together eight consecutive months where they're above 500. Two and two. Well, it all comes back to their pitching staff, which is outstanding. The bullpen, really the, the glue that's held it together the last year and a half. Julian Tavares, former Yankee, or former Cardinal, I should say. Former, former Cardinal, how about okay. former Rocky? I'll Giant. get it right in a yeah. Former Giant, former, yeah, he's been with a few teams. But he's really done a nice job in their bullpen in the setup. Well, Kim gets the punch out of Nunez. Much better eighth inning for Kim than seventh. The Rockies still right there with the Cardinals at eight. It's eight to six as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Matt Holiday is on deck in the bottom of the eighth inning. We have a pinch hitter, Brad Hopp's been called back. Dustin Moore will pinch hit. Flora is out there, a left-hander. See if there's any cat and mouse game with Larusa and Duncan, and there is. Here comes Duncan, and he's going to go to the right-hander. Now, if you're wondering at home, boy, did Clint think about this? Obviously, he and Jamie Quirk assumed that they would make a pitching change once more was announced. Well, they also still have the lefty Sullivan if they want to flip it back the other way. Eight to six, St. Louis, bottom of the eighth inning. Matt Holiday will hit after Dustin Moore, and Matt's been on the base pass all evening long. I'll be 
honest with you. Right off the bat. Well, the Rockies would like to see Matt Holliday score again. He has one run scored in this game, two for two and a walk. Rockies down by two runs. And Julian Tavares will make his 26th appearance. He's been one of the primary setup men for Jason Isringhausen. Here are the walks just four and 27 and a third. You'll have to hit the baseball to beat him. Moore started last night in right field against Mark Mulder. So here we go, Tavares against Moore. Oh, big numbers. It Dustin Moore, pinch hit. Deep over the center field wall. Well, we've talked an awful lot about Preston Wilson and his extended spring where he protected the knee. We'll think Moore was out for three weeks after the celebration on opening day. So the month of May has basically been spring training for Dustin Moore and a split duty with Brad Hawk. Things have obviously gotten a lot better in the month of May. Doubled his average, the home runs. He's playing again. Eight RBIs. Nasty slider. One ball, two strikes. Such a good slider, the bat went flying out to David Eckstein. Yeah, shaking his head, tough to pick the ball up off of Tavares. If you look at the angles with the high light kick and then that movement on the pitch, as Tavares is able to change speeds with it. Julian, the bat was at short, but he's done. Holiday will take his turn against Tavares. Oh. Throws him out. This is now the pitcher's spot, so Corey Sullivan will pinch hit. is thrown down in the Rockies pen so apparently he will be the next pitcher there's Anderson Sullivan had a pin single on Monday he's only at bat in the series Hitting 288 against right-handed pitching. 357 against lefties. Five for 14. Oh. And that's got the corner one and two. You know, what they Tavares does outstanding is he's able to throw that backdoor tight slider. Keep it right on the outer half to left-handed. Typically a pitch that would dive in on the lefties. He's able to work the outside part with it. Boy, he tried to paint it there. Could not. Two and two. Sullivan has seen some of his playing time diminish the last week or so with Preston Wilson heating up. Good chance Corey will get a start tomorrow day game after night game Preston's played a bunch in a row Supon tomorrow for the Cardinals Chacon for the Rockies and this ball will be 
cut off in the hole by Grizzlewine. Tavares works a 1-2-3 eighth inning. It remains eight for the Cardinals, six for the Rockies as we go to the ninth. 8-6 St. Louis as we go to the top of the ninth inning. The Cardinals have out-hit the Rockies tonight, 16 to 11. Coming up after the ball game is always the Rocky Mountain Sports Report and providing you with a preview of what's to come. Here's Mark Soyser. Mark? Well, Drew, I know you wanted to buy the boys Jerry Rice Broncos jerseys. Tonight we answer the question, what number will be on those jerseys? The Suns playing for their NBA lives tonight against San Antonio. We'll let you know what happened in game number five of that series. And of course, as always, our all-access pass, complete Rockies post game as soon as the work is done there at 20th and Blake. Guys? All right, Mark. We think uh, 99. Things going to wear 99. Jerry Rice. 80. Yeah. 80. <laughs> maybe, maybe 99. No, doesn't he have to stay in the 80s? One, yeah. It's probably, you know, they can have a single digit also. But Dustin Moore will be in right field. 80s taken by Rod Smith. And I think Rod Smith's earned the right to keep number 80. Well, I don't. The guy that accomplished what Jerry Rice has, I, give it up I to him. couldn't disagree more. You want to know why? why? Jerry Rice, the greatest receiver ever played, right. but he's done all his work in a Niner uniform. If he went back, and, and a little later on, if he went back to the Niners, I understand it, but over the last decade, Rod Smith has been argu enough. arguably the best number 80 in the history of the Bronco franchise. And Jerry Rice is coming in on the 18th green. Eight to six ball game. Matt Anderson comes into the game. And he throws Nine. a 94 mile an hour heater to start out. You bet the other day pitched extremely well in his debut with the Rockies. I know two runs showed up on the board, but got a little paint action on that. This ball driven by Molina deep right field. He's over the head of Moore. And Molina still hobbling will have himself a 370 foot single. You know what? This showed a lot of power to the right side for Molina. I didn't anticipated that mostly into the gap. As he limps up the line at first base. Oh, look at him run. I mean, able to squat catch. He's not going to be able to run very fast or very hard. Gutsy performance. John Mabry. He's a pinch hitter, and now uh, Enar Diaz will pinch run. All right, and you know what? I'm looking down here. Now with Mabry uh -huh. pinch hitting Diaz in the game, Marquis already pinch hit. If La Russa makes one more move among positional players, he's got to use a pitcher now, again. Yeah, they're all gone. They're, everybody's gone. Mabry takes ball one. Well, Anderson's an interesting project, and the reason why he signed is it. Number one overall pick in the draft by the Detroit Tigers had great success early given a three year contract. The whole last year spent in triple A with the Detroit Tigers. Bob McClure has worked hard at the triple A level to try to quiet his head watch his head on his delivery. He's always had a jerk with his head and what Bob has tried to do is not take it totally out of the delivery but try to calm it down. Anderson has made tremendous strides at jerk right there. And he fans Mabry for the first out in the ninth. Yeah, I mean this is old school. Look at the sock. Stop it right there. Look at this nice tuck but I like the old school socks. Nice tuck. Show me your hip pocket. He's doing just that. Watch the head as it wants to spin off of his shoulders is what it looks like as he gets right up 
there on that top, or really tilt and a jerk left. And what they've tried to do is calm it down, keep it straight to the plate, stay with the velocity and have more velocity. Well, the last pitch, 96 for by Mabry. Eckstein's had a very nice ball game offensively and defensively. Two for five officially, two runs scored. He was also on base on an error. You think back to that first inning, George. And the Rockies made so many good plays defensively last night. And they came out in the first inning and made a couple of miscues in that first two unearned runs. And that's the difference in the game right now. Ground ball hit the Desi, just an easy play. That's threw under the baseball, still stayed behind it. And JD doesn't handle the high slider, goes off the top of his glove. That'll be a pass ball. Well, they get finished by Anderson. You expect the pitch to break down and away to the hitter. And it just backed up on it. Caught the thumb of the glove of JD. Two strikes. <laughs> Dustin Moore, right field, grabs it. Two outs. And Larry Walker will hit for the second time in the game. He ground it into a double play, pinch hitting in the seventh inning with the bases loaded. He hit it sharply up the middle. Barmas made a nice play and turned it into a double play. A run came around on the double play, the go-ahead run to make it 7-6. Diaz, pinch running for Molina's at second base. And Walker gets underneath one more in right field. Tracking the baseball. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. The Rockies will have to rally against Jason Isringhausen. Crosser, Gonzalez, Barmis schedule. Eight to six, St. Louis leading the Rockies. As we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Let's take a look at our bank one game summary in this one. The Rockies had a six to four lead. They could not hold it, however. As St. Louis scored a pair in the sixth and two in the seventh. Two in the sixth tied it up. St. Louis, 17 hits in the ball game, eight for 19 runners in scoring position. The Rockies have been very good tonight at five for nine. Go back to that first inning, talked about it. Rockies give up two unearned runs in the first. You don't want to give a head start to a team like St. Louis. Jason Isringhausen, perfect 15 of 15 in safe situations, George. The 052 ERA, he's given up one run this year, period. And his last bone save during the regular season came September the 17th in 04. He's had 20 straight. He did blow a ball game in the National League Championship Series. John Mabry is in right field. They play him everywhere. There's four right fielders now tonight for the St. Louis Cardinals. And Enar Diaz used to be, you know, used to be for years when he was with Cleveland, it was Einar, but he said, no, no, my, my name is pronounced Enar. Happy to be in the big leagues, happy to have his name called and all of a sudden established himself as a good catcher, a backup catcher, and said, you know what? I want to tell y'all how my name's really pronounced. I'm tired of you calling me everything else. You know, when Cleveland came to town a couple years back, he was a starting catcher for the Indians. He now moved on. Victor Martinez, the starter. Man, that's nasty. That's Big really overhand nasty. hook. It's 0-2. And, and look at the placement of every pitch for Isringhausen so far as I've watched him in these two ball games. 
right on the outside corner. He's living out there. He's not going to put a ball in here unless it's some heat above the hand like that. Take a peek in there after that hook. Does he give him another one, Drew? Man, he's called the slider. That could move much. 90 miles an hour. Rockies on Monday night had a chance to make it interesting against Isringhausen. Barmas had a leadoff hit. He was sacrificed in a one-run game to second by Gonzalez. Intentional walk to help, but then Wilson rolled into a double play. And this will be an easy play for Epstein. One out, and Luis Gonzalez will be next. Remember the hard curveball that he asked for and gotten and received for strike two on Klosser. Molina wants this ball, excuse me, Diaz wants this ball down in the strike zone. He actually left it up. Klosser got under. You saw his reaction and disappointment. See again where he's working outside half of the plate. So many closers in recent years. You go to Dennis Eckersley all the way back to Raleigh Fingers, Goose Gossett. Guys that close games work to the outside part of the plate. One of the better snapdragons you've seen at altitude. Gonzo's in a hole 0 and 2. away. Gonzalez will go to second base. Mabry almost threw that in the left field. Well, it's going to be a base hit and an error on Isringhausen. Yeah, I don't know why he would throw it. I mean, if he catches it cleanly, maybe you have a shot. Mabry just went into the ball game in right field, almost threw it into left field as Drew showed you or talked about earlier. Yeah, Barmas, seven home runs. Tied for the club lead with Preston Wilson. Big night tonight, three for four, three doubles. Rockies trailing by two. One out, Gonzalez at second. Toward the hole. And that's a good pickup by Nunez in a throw out Barnes. Relford's had a nice night. Three hits, three for four. Player of the game brought to you by Gatorade. David Eckstein, a couple of hits, a couple of runs, and he was marvelous defensively. A typical game David Eckstein played with the Angels for the last several years. Now in the National League in his first season. Relaford trying to keep it alive for Todd Helton. Give Helton a shot against Isringhausen. The injury to Aaron Miles, Desi's been playing almost every day. He and Luis Gonzalez playing a lot. And both have responded.
up, easy play. Nunez backs up, and that'll be the ball game. Isringhausen remains perfect, 16 of 16, and the Cardinals come from behind, and they win this ball game Wednesday night, 8 to 6. The winning pitcher, Matt Morris, he's unbeaten, he's 6 and 0. Blaine Neal takes the loss, Jason Isringhausen is 16th save. Welcome to the Rocky Mountain Sports Report, brought to you by your local Colorado Chevy dealers. Well, the Rockies had their opportunities. They swung the bat better with runners in scoring position. But Joe Kennedy, even though he gave up two unearned runs in the first, he was not as sharp as we've seen Joe. You no, know, he wasn't. A lot of base hits given up by Kennedy in this ball game. He wasn't ahead in the count like you normally see. He didn't walk a lot of guys, but but still some something just wasn't clicking right tonight for him. Morris was able to just battle around, stick on it, stick on it, until he finally ends up getting his sixth win. Think about that, he battled through this thing, but that's a character of Tony La Russa too, to let those guys battle, they're pretty good. Well, La Russa emptied his entire bench and used Jason Marquis as a pitch hitter tonight. They needed everybody to get it done. Eight to six is the final. We'll come back to Coors Field in a short while.